Hi, this is Becky Dvorak with Healing and Miracles International. I received a letter from a woman named Gail in the United States, and I want to share her question with you, and I'm going to answer it, and I think it's a very pertinent question. I think it will help and bless many of you. So let's start by reading her question, and then I wrote down some notes. I have scriptures and things to read and discuss with you concerning it. So let's start with her letter first. Gail writes, Becky, on page 114 of the Healing Creed, you speak of a religious spirit amongst Christians that rises up against the healing power of Jesus. I asked the Holy Spirit to show me what this means and repented of it in case it is something that I am in some way involved with. But is it possible to be more specific about what you mean? I read this with my husband, and we are both questioning what you might be referring to. So, in regards to Gail's question, let's talk about a religious spirit, and I'm going to read to you from my latest work, The Healing Creed, with Destiny Image Publishers. I hope that's not glaring. And we're going to read um, page 114, the portion of writing that she's actually referring to here. So, it says, I'm going to speak forthrightly with you. It is a religious spirit amongst Christians that rises up against the healing power of Jesus Christ. A religious spirit is not something you want to hold on to. It is an antichrist spirit that proudly resists him and his ways. But the good news is that you do not have to stay bound to this spirit. You can get free by repentance and stay free by studying the Bible and believing and doing what it says. Trust me when I say Dr. Jesus wants you to be free from this wicked spirit and he wants to heal you too. So that's on page 114 of the Healing Creed. Now, I'm going to start answering this question for you, Gail, and those of you that are listening by by reading some notes that I that I wrote down and we're going to start with church government. So, yes, church government. <laughs> um in the Christian church, there is the church government where people or groups of people are over others in in the church. They they they're higher ranking than others. Um, you can also refer to it as the chain of command, or other people would refer to it as the pecking order. Um, here's a prime example. Um, in the established church in Africa, we have, it's common to obviously to have pastors, shepherds over the congregation, the members of the church where they are to teach and minister to the people. And then we have, over the pastors, we have bishops and bishops oversee the pastors a group of pastors and then over the bishops you will have an archbishop who is over the bishops now that is like the chain of command in the christian church and and there's nothing wrong with church government it's biblical and it is especially important and profitable when the church leaders in all of these different ranking orders when their hearts are pure before Jesus. But oftentimes today, because we are living in the last days, and Revelations, the book of Revelations, discuss talks a lot about this, about there is corruption in the church. And this is where the religious spirit will, will take effect or take hold of the people and prevent the blessings or the promises of God from manifesting over people. And so Jesus talks about this in Matthew 23. In, and I am going to read to you some scriptures that Jesus himself is rebuking people that, you know, the Pharisees and that. And this is from Matthew 23. And I am reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible, if you want to follow along. And I do recommend that you read this on your own, chapter 23 of Matthew. We are going to read verses 25 through 28. And it says, this is Jesus speaking. And he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, 
for you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the dish, so that the outside of it may become clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but on the inside they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. So you too outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. So, that's pretty strong. And those are the words of Jesus. Jesus, he was not very kind when it came to a religious spirit. In other words, I should say, he rebuked them. He spoke things plain. He called these people whitewashed tombs. In other words, they were dead men spiritually. And, you know, he, it was very serious because he knew the the negative effects it had on people. And, you know, when it comes to this, a religious spirit, um, especially, you know, from coming down from the church leadership, they make up all these rules and regulations. You have to do this. You can't do this. For example, you have to wear this dress. You have to wear this hat. Your hat has to be this way. Um, you have to eat this. You can't eat this. Um, other examples, like I, like we run into here in Guatemala um, with the religious spirit. They say people can't play soccer because if they play soccer, they might, you know, they, they get mad and upset and they'll start saying bad words. Um, that's true. They say that. Um, you can't play cards with your children. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on all around the world, not just here in Guatemala, but all over. And it's, it's rules and regulations that you cannot find in Scripture, and it, and it makes life pretty miserable. Um, it is usually man-made rules and regulations that certain people um, have to a attain and others don't have to. For example, um, in the village where I live, the women often have to wear the traditional dress, you know, from from long ago, but the men don't have to. The men can wear Western clothes. I mean, and it's like none of it makes sense. But anyway, that is, those are just examples of a religious spirit. And there is no grace involved. It's all about outward appearance, how you appear to people. It's actually a works mentality which has nothing to do with the grace of Jesus Christ. And when I say grace, I'm not speaking hyper grace. I mean grace, the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ. That's grace. And so we want to be free from these things because as we see also in Scripture in John 11, the religious spirits rose up against a mighty miracle that Jesus had performed. And they tried to actually stop it. This is in John 11, when Jesus raised his dear friend Lazarus from the dead. Now, Lazarus had died and was buried in, in the tomb, and Jesus arrives on the scene on day four after, after Lazarus had died. And so, you know, the body had already been deteriorating. It was, rot, it was rotting. It was smelly. And now Jesus shows up on the scene, and people are, like, doubting him, but... You know, Jesus was full of faith, and death didn't scare him either, and it shouldn't scare us as well. And so anyway, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Remember, he called out those mighty words, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And this mighty power <laughs> of, of God comes forth, and Lazarus walks out of that tomb, still wrapped up in his grave clothes. And it was a mighty miracle. And, you know, signs and wonders lead people to Jesus. Miracles and healings. That's all about winning other people to Jesus, to eternal life with the Father God. And so the, the Pharisees, all of them, that the, the religious spirit rose up against this mighty miracle because all these people started believing in Jesus. 
That's what that's what miracles do. And and the and this religious spirit rose up against this mighty miracle and they tried to stop it. And so they tried to kill Lazarus, but they couldn't. But they tried to. And that's what our even today religious spirits will do. Even my husband and I, you know, I, I share about the mighty testimony of how we raised our son Marcos from the dead. And his testimony, you know, it's in my first work, Dare to Believe, and I've shared it on YouTube videos. I've ministered all over the world and share his testimony. And it's won many people to Jesus. And many people have received their healings and miracles because of the, the mighty testimony that, that Marcos has. And but the religious spirit of nowadays will rise up against us and they will they, they get angry about it. And, you know, sometimes I just want to look at people like that, you know, with a religious spirit and say, would it make you more comfortable if my son had died? Seriously, would you not be convicted then had he died? No, thank you. I don't want any part of your religious spirit. I want the true power of faith. I want the true power of Jesus operating in my life. And so I renounce religious spirits that come and rise up against us in Jesus' name. They have no power over us. And so you don't want them having power over you either. And I tell you, when you, when you start testifying that you are believing God for a mighty miracle, a religious spirit will rise up against you, try to talk you out of it. Why? Because they are afraid. The demons of a religious spirit are afraid of the eternal fruit that your miracle will produce. So you want to be free and clean of the entanglement with religious spirits around you, of being entangled yourself with a religious spirit. What do I mean by that? In the first chapter, and let me show you in case you haven't seen The Healing Creed. This is my latest work, The Healing Creed, by Destiny Image Publishers. And in the first chapter of the book, I share a testimony with you about how when I was a new believer, I didn't know, but I had a, I had a religious spirit. I was born again. I knew my sins were forgiven, and I, and I was totally in love with Jesus, but my mind wasn't renewed yet. You know, I was reading and studying the Word of God, and it takes time for your mind to be renewed with the power of the Word of God. And I share with you a personal testimony about when I was a young mom and I was expecting my third child, and I went into premature labor six weeks before he was due, and and they put me on medication, and they had me on bed rest for six weeks, and I vividly have this memory of myself kneeling on my living room floor, begging and pleading Jesus not to take the life of my child. See, what I didn't realize then is what, that I had a negative religious image of Jesus, as if Jesus was the one trying to steal the life of my child. I now know that that's not true because John 10.10 10 tells us that the thief who is Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. And so I had to be renewed. I had to get into the word of God concerning healing and discover that Jesus was not my enemy, but he was he was my healer. He was my savior. He was my redeemer. He was my friend. He was my helper in every area of life, including healing. Since then, you know that I've changed a lot since then. But see, that was an example of having a religious spirit. It was wrong teaching, wrong thinking about who Jesus really is. And so Gail and those of you listening, you want to be free from that. You want to make sure you do not have a religious spirit or that re a religious spirit from others around you is not having a wicked effect on your own healing in Jesus' name. So I thank you, Gail, for, for writing and asking me this question. And, and I hope you and those of you listening 
have learned something today and that you are set free from a religious spirit. So let's pray right now in Jesus' name. Just mean it from your heart. Father God, in Jesus' name, I repent of wrong thinking towards you as healer. I repent for taking an ungodly, a religious spirit that has nothing to do with your grace, but it's all about works and, and, and outward appearance. Forgive me. Help me, Holy Spirit, to be clean of this and and to renew my mind in the power of your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen, and I hope you are blessed by this message today. And I wish that you have a great day today. In Jesus' name, thank you.